Knowing how to effectively use color as a UI designer is probably one of the most important, but also at the same time, one of the most difficult skills to master. You gotta know how to find colors, pair colors, match colors, build color palettes, color scales, and all of it matters. So in this lesson that's pulled directly from my 30 day UI design program, I'm gonna teach you all about color theory and how to apply it as a UI designer. <laughs> Start talking about some really fast color theory. Now, uh, historically, your primary colors have been red, green, blue. Now, in the last decade or so, there's kind of been a little bit of an argument on whether or not that's true, how our human eye actually sees things a little bit closer to that CMYK range. None of that really matters to you. All you need to know is the things that matter to you as a UI designer, and that is RGB values and hex values. On the web, we use RGB, that is red, green, and blue, as our primary colors. And then we use this code, these hex values to represent those colors. RGB is what we call an additive color model. So colors are created by adding color and light to black. So the RGB color system defines all colors as a combination of these three different colors. It's a particular shade of red, green, and blue. So for instance, you can see here RGB 59, that's the red, 89 is the green, and 145 is the blue, equals Facebook blue. And this makes sense because it's primarily blue, and these values, these reds and greens, are tweaking or changing the quality of blue, right? We also have RGB 000, that equals black. Why? Because we're not adding anything to those channels. RGB 255, 255, 255, this equals white because we're adding everything. We're adding all of the light to each one of those channels and it comes out as pure white. Now the hex color system converts each value into a hexadecimal uh, representation. So for instance, that Facebook blue, we don't use this inside of Figma, we use this value. It always starts with a hashtag and then it has six values or characters after that. There's your Facebook blue. Uh, 000, 000 equals black. Also, quite often when you have some sort of hex value that's all matching or repeating, we'll usually say the first two or the first three. So for instance, you can see here 000, that's what that's black or FFF. Sometimes we'll have something like EF, EF, EF. We just call that EF. And that's how the hex values work for those. Every two characters represents the color value. So for Facebook blue, the red hue is the 3B right there. And then the green is the 59. And then the 9B is 9B at the end, right? So that's how RGB and hex values work. There are some tools online where you can convert hex back to RGB and RGB to hex. I'll put a link in the chapter notes for this chapter if you want to find those and explore those on your own. Pretty fun, pretty interesting. Next, let's talk about hot and cold. Uh, colors also have warmth and they can be classified as either hot or cold. And you'll hear color spoken about in this way really casually, like, ah, can we add a little warmth to that? Or could we cool those colors down? Also, when it comes to color theory, you'll quite often hear that warm colors emote some sort of emotion or feeling and cool colors might emote something else. When we say warm and cold, we're saying that warm colors contain higher amounts of red and yellow. And again, they can invoke warmth and passion inside of design. And sometimes if you move into the reds, they can feel very aggressive or bold. That's why red is often error message. We're saying, hey, this is bold. This is aggressive. Pay attention to me. Now, when we get to the cool colors, they contain those higher values of blue and we think about ice and winter and nighttime and death and sadness even. And they can carry these connotations of loneliness and coldness and fear, but quite often they can be positive as well. That's why a lot of social media companies like old school Twitter before it got changed, as well as LinkedIn, Facebook, and a slew of other you know, applications use blue because it emotes this seriousness or this professionalism. And so hot and cold is another way that we can define colors. If you're enjoying this lesson, there are 150 other lessons, almost 40 hours of video content inside of the 30 day UI design program, as well as a learning community, a forum where you can post, ask and answer questions 
live events with me that are exclusive to that community, and a whole bunch more. So if you're enjoying this lesson and you want to master user interface design, consider signing up to become a 30-day UI designer. The link is down in the description. Let's talk about tints and shades. When you add white to a color to create a tint, that's how you create tints by adding white to a color, and then you add black to a color and that creates a shade. And that's really easy to think of because as we pull the shades down in our house, it gets darker. So just remember shade is darker, therefore the tint is a little bit lighter. So tints and shades let you create monochromatic color palettes or schemes. And we're gonna be doing this quite a bit as we get further along in this section and then further along in the program. So this, that you, this color palette you see on the right is something that is very, very pertinent, very important inside of UI design. Because we have some sort of primary color, it could be this color here. And then we're gonna go ahead and add a bunch of tints of white. It could be a layer of white on top of it, a percentage of white. This is gonna give us a lot of room and different colors to work with. So we have some sort of primary button. Maybe this is the color for our primary button. But if we have some sort of active state on a row or some text, maybe this is the lighter color that we'll use. So we don't really inundate the user with tons of deep, dark, or bold colors. Next, let's talk about saturation, hue, and lightness. And I think this graphic is really, really important because saturation, the term saturation, describes the intensity of color. And as we make it more saturated, what we're saying is we're giving it less and less gray. When it's desaturated, we're moving closer and closer to gray. So when we say light blue or dark green, we're describing changes in the saturation. Hue, the term hue, actually defines the degree to which the color can be described as similar to or different from red, orange, yellow, green, blue. So when you describe a color as bluish green, what you're defining it is you're mixing it two hues to try to describe the color, okay? Lastly, lightness, also known as the value or tone, but honestly in UI design, we just call it lightness. It defines the perceived brightness of a color compared to pure white. So you can see here, we have saturation moving in and out towards the this pillar of dark and light. You have the hue, which is the colors around the color wheel, and you have lightness, and that's moving up and down this cylinder, moving you know, from light to dark. So if we took this same hue of blue out here and this same saturation, that's this pie wedge, and we moved it up and we just kind of ticked it up this notch here, we would be adding lightness, not necessarily changing the hue or the saturation, but changing the value or the lightness to it. Let's talk about the color wheel. Obviously, you most likely you have seen this. If not, this is the color wheel. It's a basic wheel that contains 12 standard colors. Uh, you might see a different color wheel that contains less and then in between, we just infer the mixing of those colors. But this is the color wheel that we're gonna talk about in this program. And um, it's a great tool to create awesome color schemes. So each slice of this pie represents a family of colors that can be achieved with different saturation, hue, tint, shades, mixes of neighboring colors. So the color combinations here are pretty much limitless. There are millions and millions of color combinations. But when you design, you should think about the color wheel and choose you know, one primary color and then maybe some supporting colors. We're gonna talk about how to pick a color palette right now. So we have five types of traditional color schemes. You might say, what if I wanna do something different than this and create a completely unique color scheme? You can, it just won't match these traditional color schemes and it doesn't necessarily need to, but let's walk through these traditional color schemes so you can see them. Uh, designers can create color schemes by pairing multiple color families from the color wheel and it works best when you use one of the following patterns. You have monochromatic, complementary, analogous, triadic, and tetradic. Now, these are hard to kind of define unless I give you a tool to use. And to do that, we're gonna jump over to a couple of color tools that you might start using right away. This one is actually my favorite. This is put out by the folks over at Canva. I'll put the link in this chapter's notes, but you can actually see the color wheel here and we can change the color. And because it's set to be a complementary color, it's always gonna be looking across the color wheel. Now again, similar to that graphic, I can move closer to the middle and I can start to desaturate, changing the hue, changing the tone, changing the lightness and brightness. And as we select here, then I can actually change the boldness of it, right? Adding and subtracting values to it. But 
It's nice because it pops out my hex value here and it does some of the work for me. And so this, these would be some really great color combinations for you. Now, complementary, generally speaking, complementary and monochromatic are the color schemes you will most likely be using as a UI designer, but you might explore and play with some other ones. To do that, you can jump down to monochromatic. Again, here we are choosing a monochromatic color scheme here with multiple values. We could choose instead of monochromatic, analogous. This is going to choose elements next to it on the color wheel. You could also choose triadic, which is going to split it out in this tricycle or, you know, three part way and, and it's going to split it perfectly. And really what we're doing is we're trying to be as mathematical as possible. And that's why tools like this exist. The last one would be custom and that's something you can do. But uh, the last one would be triadic and tetradic, which honestly, you probably don't even need to use it. If you wanted to play with these more, I have some more color tools that I'll be showing you later on. One of those being Adobe Cooler, and you can jump into all sorts of different uh, non-traditional color palettes as well, like double split and square and compound. These are just different ways that the color palette changes and offers you this, this nice laid out palette for you. So something interesting to play with, but those are the five types of color schemes that you'll probably run across. Now, color palette and creation and inspiration, exactly what I was just about to get to here. If you're feeling overwhelmed, and you probably will, because there are tons and tons of colors and color palettes, it's nice to have some tools to use. So I wanted to show you some more of these tools so you can start to experiment by building color. We've already seen uh, Adobe Color or Cooler. Um, you've also seen the Color Wheel tool over here on Canva. Also a pretty fun one is Color Dot. Uh, color Dot is a way for you to manually start building palettes. Like uh, we can find a color we like, maybe this purple, click to save it. And you'll notice that as I you know, work on this color, as I move left to right, it's changing the actual hue. But as I go up and down, it's actually changing the value, right? Which is kind of interesting. And I can actually scroll on my uh, mouse here to get saturated or desaturated. So we can choose some elements there and start picking together some colors, and maybe building a palette like that. So that's kind of an interesting one as well. Coolers is probably one of my favorites. Uh, it's a great tool that allows you to either explore trending palettes that have already been created or start generating your own. We've already seen a generator. Let's look at the trending palette. So I could click right there. You can sign up for free or you don't even have to sign up. You can just kind of explore these and then you can start looking at some of these palettes. And as I roll over them, you'll see that it's exposing some of the or the hex value actually there, which is really, really nice. You can also search uh, for terms like either colors, styles, topics. Uh, we might want to do something, you know, even just a keyword like organic here and popping that in is going to give us a pretty good start to some organic palettes. Like this is a pretty good one. This would be beautiful for a website or mobile app. Um, so we can actually just click and copy the values here and bring those into our designs. If you enjoy this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and UI design specifically. So stick around by ringing that bell so you know when more videos like this one come out. Check the description down below for a link to the 30 day UI design program where this lesson is directly pulled from. I hope you're having an amazing week designing amazing things, making amazing things and mastering color. We'll see you in the next one.